can be Nardwa. This is the first time for us. It's the motherfucking Jungle, Jungle Beats. Beats Awards. The awards. This is going to be the next fucking Emmys, the next fucking Grammys. This is what the artists are going to be looking at 2019. These two motherfucking white cringe boys. That's right. Talking the best shit. All right. We, we, we've created our own list of uh, just basically elements within music that we really enjoyed throughout the whole year. So just a list of things which we've named and we're going to award to certain people within the industry that have impressed us. First one, starting off with... The best ad-lib of 2018. Yes. Hold up. You do yours. Oh, hold on. We want, we want all of you to put your answers below. Yeah. And you, you can't... You got to type it. Or should, I, should we do both of them at the same time? Or should we... Yeah, it's all about the same time. Okay, okay. On three, two, one. one. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mick Jenkins, push a T. Do it again. Yeah. Just on like 80% of his tracks, it's just like... Dun, 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 and then just like, it's like, oh yeah, this is chill. And all of a sudden, oh! It's like he's busting a passionate a nut on every nut track. too. But, but see, Push's one is old. I couldn't think of any others because he kind of hit me well, with this. It's really good though. It's one of your favorite albums of the year. It's, it's one, classic. Yeah. It's and a it's, classic. Exactly. It's a classic ad lib that I always love. Yeah. But uh, fuck yeah. What is yours? Next segment. Best feature verse of 2018. Whew, this was tough. And if you can't choose, I've, I've got a runner up for a few. So if you can't, if you want to pick, have like a winner and a runner up. But no more. Uh, J. Cole. Off these with JID. I have that as well. I personally believe it came out late, but after listening to it again, I couldn't stop listening to it. I couldn't stop hitting that play button. Even listening to the album, I'd go back to be like, sorry, I gotta listen to this one again. I gotta go back. They, they, they just perform so well again. And also the fact that I think that he's also had an incredible year with like Royce to 5'9, Bob Lloyd Boat, Bass, Tribe, Pretty Little Fears, Black. J. Cole has had an incredible year for features, but I believe that this is his best one. I think he's the best feature artist, arguably, of 2018. Man. If I have to give runner-ups or other people who are competing, I'm going uh, Eminem on Royce to 5'9 Caterpillar. Mm. It's funny because I got Royce with Bubba Bear. So. I, got, I got Kanye West on Nas's Cop Shot the Kids. I've got uh, uh, Tierra Whack on Student One's Yin Yang. Okay. And then I've got last one is Beyonce on DJ Khaled's Top Off. Which one's the best though? Which verse? Yeah, which one was your favorite? What was my favorite? If you had to choose one. Probably, uh, probably Off D's or Beyonce. So J. Cole or Beyonce. That's crazy. Um, Beyonce really hit me. Next segment. The three best new artist finds of 2018. So artists that we, you might have heard, but we have never heard of in this year and are absolutely amazed by them. Go one by one. Uh, it's technically cheating because I technically found her in 2017. It's all good, man. But Rosalia. Nice. Um, you guys all know how we feel about this Spanish phenom. Um, yeah. My top five. What was it? Number five? Fifth best album of the year. Yeah, man. Yours? Put it down. Uh, Gracie Hopkins. Of course. Of course. What was he, watched... number four? Yeah, it was number four in my top ten. Uh, was in top top ten tracks. Incredible. An amazing find for me. Just off Spotify. Came in a random playlist, was immediately hooked by his vocals and his charism charisma, and fuck yeah, man, played the shit out of him this year. Number two, which was my D Deezy Brown. Mm. Uh, where was he on my on my top? Number 10? three. Number three, Deezy. Oh, sorry, number four. Sorry. Fuck, I forget my own list. <laughs> shit. Go back to our top ten albums. You'll see. Deezy Brown, thanks to the most unruly uh, for recommending and doing an interview with this guy mm. couldn't be without him uh kanye west travis scott inspirations yeah. but still stands on his own i got frank casino another artist both these artists grace and frank are both from france uh takes on a whole new wave of trap and auto tune takes his own style with it really fuck with him he got number 10 in my top 10 check him out number three last one young fathers yes their album was ooh, special. They're a special Eerie. group of artists. 100%, man. And I've got Student One as well. One of my favorite finds. He was the runner-up, I said, on the, on the feature verse with Tierra Whack. Just the, what stars I found. Didn't even have an album. Had two EPs out. And I played them to death. I loved him. I loved his style. I love uh, his silliness and also his wordplay. Just, I really expect big things of him. He's awesome. Next segment. Albums you've gone back to the most outside of 2018. What was yours? I had two. 
I had a uh, Crystal Castles, Crystal Castles, Crystal Castles first album. Never heard. Subtitle. Okay. It's a uh, glitch. So very electronic, very experimental. Okay. I couldn't. Nothing sounds like it. Thank you to Chris Palmer for putting me onto them. And also, uh, uh, Jamison's Priscilla. Ah. Whoa. Okay. The red and white one. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a big fan of Jamison, and he released a new album this year, which I didn't like at all. So you were back. I was like, I was mad. I was like, you're supposed to be evolving to create this masterpiece, to evolve to a more simpler and easier sound. I'm just blown, like, like I'm happy for him because he's getting successful, but I'm just like, this, this album for me represented such a vulnerable and depressing and artistic time for him. And so because I was so disappointed by his new album, I went back to this old album so much this year. It's amazing. Fair enough. And <coughs> my... Um, the album that I've gone back to the most outside of this year is none. I don't have an answer. That's fine. I can't. It's, it's, I just, I've, it, it's all been 2018. It just much. proves how big this year's been. Exactly. It's been that good a year. I, I can't pick. Maybe artists, maybe guys like Ace Hood. I'm listening to his older mixtapes. Mm-hmm. That, that'd be a guy like that. Uh, Next award. Next. Album you believe will go the most unnoticed this year, but deserves the highest of praise. I'm going to tell you mine straight up. Sylvan Lecuse, apologies in advance. Yeah, great point. I should, have, <laughs> I should have added that. I agree with that. You know, a few. I personally believe it was both in our top three. Three for you, two for me. And I've already talked about on what it represents, how close it is to me. And I truly believe that it's going to go really underappreciated for how amazing it really is. But we're, we're, that's, that's one reason we, we do this is to put these mm. on and on Exactly, man. So agreeing with that, I would add... An album I said before, DZ Brown's DZ Judith Browns. will absolutely go unnoticed, mm-hmm. yet I think it deserves extremely high praise, as well as, now this is interesting, Rosalia's um, album, El Mar Cuera, Cuera, I can't say it right, I'm sorry, I think within <laughs> the Spanish world, it's not going to go unnoticed, but within the mainstream English Western world, it's going to go relatively unnoticed. I think it's doing alright though, especially thanks to Fantana. But, but like based on what? What, are we, yeah, yeah, what? I don't know, like what are we measuring that with? No, I think you're right. Like, I think if you had a hundred... Outside of Europe. I think if you had a hundred um, Australian music listeners, you'd get less than five who would have even heard of it. Mm. But I'm guessing. But you're guessing. Next award. Three best new tracks you've found from artists you've never heard of. Fuck, I only got two. Oh, that's fine. Uh, you, I'll go first then, because that makes sense. I've got the Tokyo Twins with Northside. Never heard of them. Uh, randomly came on my Spotify and it just became one of those tracks that I just played again and again and again. It was nothing mind blowing about it. It just had like a very poppy, trappy feel to it, really light hearted, just a really catchy hook. And I just kept playing it. It was a really fun track. So shout out to the Tokyo Twins. I actually thought of the third one a Goong Mango. Uh, how do you say it? A woke up, yeah, a Goong Mango. A Goong Mango. I woke, woke up, up in Japan. Japan. Everybody, man, I woke up in Japan. Hey! An absolute Bro. banger. An incredible young Melbourne artist 100%. who uh, needs more claim. Needs more claim. Absolutely amazing track. Uh, I've also got uh, Frank Leone with Huffing Paint and Don't Clip because I thought both these tracks deserved to mention. Uh, brand new artist, doesn't have an album or EP on Spotify, just his tracks, like four or five tracks. And both these tracks blew me away. Huffing Paint is about uh, dealing with someone that you've lost and, and turning to like Huffing Paint as in like, you know, as in a, an addiction and trying to find ways to cope with it and just like being like, why, why do you take him away from me? Like, why, why is it going to be like this? So I thought it was a really, and just his voice is, um, the, the notes he hits is very different to other artists I've heard as well. So I'm really excited to see where Frank Leone heads in 2019 from just hearing singles from him. Uh, Zayna and Jason Meek, Get to Work. Oh, nice. I really, really like this track. I get up. It had a very East Coast, upbeat, funky vibe that I love. Fuck yeah. I'm fucking with you, man. That was amazing. Uh, And now I've got Rose Hart, who I mentioned in my honorable mentions, with God Damn. God Damn. Uh, Like I said, amazing album, a random find through Spotify. And this was the best track on the album. Beautiful use of his vocals that we hit these really melancholy sort of sounds and the, the production here is just so clean it's beautiful it's an amazing track last one for me your man frank casino <laughs> oh yeah whole thing we got the whole thing whole thing we got we got we got the whole thing it's so, so good dark grimy. 
grimy and, and dramatic. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to banger of the year. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Frank Casino, whole thing. You motherfucker. <laughs> You motherfucker. <laughs> it's actually it's actually written here. Banger of the year. Frank Casino, you've had a great year. Whole thing was nuts. I had a runner up too, but I gotta find it wherever I read it. How do I go to my top songs? Here we go. I, you go, I you, think you, it'll you. be my oh, top songs for My runner up is Jaden Smith's Ghost. Ghost? Oh that reminds me, okay. Bro, I got a demo and a you know how goes it? See, I think my bangers of the year. Would be Greg Newman's forecast. Yeah, yeah. One of the best I know now is guys. 100%. For my guys who weight train, lift, or run, or physically move their body. Shit. Not me. Get that shit. Not 2019. 2019. I'll see all you there. Um, forecast by uh, Greg Newman. Uh, Icon by Jaden Smith. Mm. These are kind of runner ups. Uh, the so whole push. That's, that's 2017. Well, that's retarded. This is my most played song for 2018. Look at that shit. Or one of them. Uh, you didn't like Ghost? You didn't like Ghost. I did, I just didn't listen to it that much. I smashed it. I smashed it. That's my runner-up. Uh, so you had to choose one though. Is Greg Newman your it's one? It's Greg Newman. Yeah, true, true, true. It was incredible. Next segment! A Patreon pick of 2018. This was hard. Is yours Greg Newman? <laughs> Look, I, I said Noah James x Greg Newman. Mm -hmm. So th these are my two I was deciding with. Yeah. From an, from an album perspective, obviously Noah James. From a single perspective, Greg Newman. Mm -hmm. I went with uh, 29192, Cosmic Hustle. Whoa, wait, the best unknown Patreon pick? So They were an unknown artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, you didn't, not even Greg Newman or, or Noah James? Greg Newman's my runner-up. Damn, son. Noah James, I fuck with heavy, but remember the album, there was a lot on there I didn't really like. I really feel like he can grow so much as an artist. I personally believe that Noah James has got... So much growing to do. I could see so much potential in. So, so right now, I think it's not as good as these two. You know what I love about nine hundred two whatever. Two nine one two nine one two two one nine two. Yeah, we actually we didn't mean to listen to the whole album, right? We yeah. weren't meant to. We were meant to just listen to the first three tracks, and we fucked with it. Well, I fucked with it so much. They were like, "Fuck it, listen to the whole album." And it was just, it was very trap Migos style music, but done in a way that like, because we're not used to hearing unknown artists that flow on beats so well and just have like a sound that's so crisp and clear like it was just so refreshing and start to finish it was a really well done album which is why i have to put it as my patreon pick of 2018 29192 did their thing and greg newman of course with the runner-up because he is incredible and i expect massive things from him next segment who exceeded your expectations this year above all other artists i got a couple i wrote two saba bucklist project blown away Expected good things, but I didn't expect Care For Me to be the level it was. Mm -hmm. it, it legit, I remember listening to Care For Me and being like, I was like, how is there nothing like slightly wrong with it? Everything here is just that level up that I thought that he could peak at. He, he blew me away this year, Saba. Didn't expect him. Fair enough. Honestly, I didn't expect Royster 5-9 to come back with the Book Orion. Yeah. I didn't expect him to follow up layers with another potential classic. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good one. Uh, J. Cole. K.O.D. K.O.D. Who would have expected J. Cole to take that turn and have some of the best features of the year? Mm -hmm. J. Cole had an amazing year. I've talked about it a lot, but he deserves praise, man. Holy shit. For me, Lupe Fiasco, we all know his caliber. We, is. We know his upper echelon. We know his caliber. But sometimes it's easy to lose faith from how much disappointment they can give you. Especially after Drogo's light. Hunted. So we know he can do Testo in youth. Mm -hmm. And he came back with Drogo's wave and shocked me and mm. in a good way but not like I, I knew he was capable of this but like fuck anyway oh you're done uh <laughs> and bro black uh exceeded my expectations because which for those who don't know yeah i didn't like the album <laughs> you like the album at all um coming back from free black good didn't expect to go to great but he did next segment who didn't meet your expectations at all this year? Joji. Joji, even though he had my 20th best favorite track of the year, he, look, at this point, he's, he has so much, like, I think he has a lot of skill, talent, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and potential, but we're, we're sitting here with his first debut project, and he's quite experienced musically, and I, 
I'm still hit with mediocrity, and it's disappointing. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to agree 100% with me on this one. Jazz Cartier. Oh, I forgot. Oh, man. What was it? Godflower? No, it was, um, yeah. Yeah. Jazz. No, Flavora. Flavora. Sorry. What are you doing? What are you doing? Jazz Cartier, for those who don't know, is what I originally thought was one of Ca- Canada's best potentials after a guy Still like is. Drake. Still is. Okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, and what he did with uh, Hotel Paranoia. And Marauding in Paradise. Like, just really very amazing projects. Like, so catchy, infectious, uh, just draws you in, has so much replay value, so many just booming hooks. To go to just a, such a generic and boring and uninteresting album with one to two good tracks on this It's so long album. too, it's 20 tracks. Too like, much. didn't meet expectations whatsoever. Way below the bar. Yeah. Way below the bar. It was disappointing. Um, but, you know... I still got faith, Jazz. Yeah, we yeah, we good. I've also got nowhere near as bad as Jazz, but J-Rock. Oh, okay. I... Obviously, if you've watched the review, I created my own J-Rock album with seven tracks, which I've played a lot this year. <laughs> Made my own seven-track album. But if we're talking about the album in full, I know a lot of people fucked with it. I do know that J-Rock did grow for this album, did have a lot more fun with it, did take a lot more hook priority. So he is growing a lot, but just not in the way that I personally thought he should or would make him sound better. So this is just my personal opinion. So I still think he's doing a great job growing as an artist, but from what I expected of him, after hearing 90059, which is one of... Uh, the best TDE albums was massively below my expectation. Fair enough. Is that it? That's it for that one. Next segment. Best hook of the year. Uh, there's so many tracks, man. i give you mine. Fuck me. I don't... Uh, Kanye West, all mine. With, uh, I can't remember his name. What was that hook? Dear at the bottom. Dear we down, dear we down the bottom. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. That's pretty good. Dude, just the way that... Can we get his name? I feel bad not mentioning him. Like, let's just mention the best look of the name without mentioning the feature. Bali. Oh. V A L E D. So that used to be his name. Yeah, so he changed it. So, so yeah, the reason we couldn't find it is because his name now is Ant Clemens, but it used to be Bali. Oh, that's like crazy. Change. Ant Clemens is good. Ant Clemens, it's got like, uh, it's got class to it. Bali just sounds tacky. Yeah, it sounds loose. Either way, that was my favorite hook because I think, I didn't have a runner up because I thought that that was so strongly different yeah. and catchy. Because you hear a hook and you're like, oh, this is amazing, but you've heard it before. I've never, heard a hook. I've never heard a hook like that before. Probably for me, then, what comes to mind, and I don't have one prepared. Gun it up, gun it up, gun it up. Gun Probably it. ATM is one of the catchiest ones for me, even though it's not fancy, it's not complex, it's just catchy and kind Probably. of memorable. I feel like you like KOD more, though. Well, Both. I'm just going off the handle. Give it to J. Cole, bye. My boy. Next segment. <laughs> Worst track of 2018. I don't know, man. I don't listen to shit tracks. I can give you mine right now. Little Baby and Drake. Yes, indeed. Pikachu. <laughs> Worst track of the fucking year. We reviewed this piece of track twice. Because they changed the name. <laughs> and then they released an album. Little Baby got these props. They released an album with Gunner and got these props. Holy shit, man. Can we get rid of these whack-ass artists in this fucking industry, please? Oh, shit. That is my worst track of 2018. Yeah, I co signed that. Piece of shit. I co signed that. Holy fucking horse crap dung. Burn that shit. It's dip. Delete it. And now, worst album of 2018. Justin Timberlake, Man Takes a Shit in the Woods. Was that this year? That was this year. Whoa. That was this year. One of the first digits we did. Holy shit. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Justin. <sighs> that was. Man Takes a Shit in the Woods. One of the, one of the hardest albums i've ever had to review but one of the best shit reviews we've done we even did a, we even did a little short video for it yes 
I really hope wish Justin saw like that. we lost our minds. I lost my minds. It was Christmas time on one track. If you want to see us lose our minds, go watch that. Absolutely great, great memory because I forgot that because I I put it deep into my. <laughs> Don't go into that zone. Into the into he the. Del- he deleted it from his memory vault. Yeah, yeah. I just recycle bench. Yeah. yeah, terrible album. Terrible, terrible. He tried to men mesh genres together and it didn't work. I don't even know why Pharrell co-signed it. Pharrell knows that sounds bad. He knows. He just knows he's getting money from JT. Next segment. The final one, my fellow. The final one. The top artist of 2018. And it doesn't have to be because of a favorite album. His or her overall influence to you, particularly throughout the year. So it could be throughout the media, through something they've done throughout their life. It could. It's just that artist in general and what they've done for you. Oh... I'm going to throw one that you're not expecting. He didn't drop an album this year. Does, mm-hmm. that, does that matter? No, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just an artist that's inf- like, like, they've influenced you the most. They're your favorite artist of the year because they've helped you be a better you. Helped you grow. I couldn't name a couple, but... I got two, so... Okay, good. jay Z's one of them for me. Mm-hmm. And this was solidified when I saw him and Beyonce perform. I could really say Jay-Z and Beyonce, but Jay-Z especially. I've been watching a lot more interviews this year and uh, of him and uh, just been diving into him as a person and... Uh, Really just an all-class professional artist and person that I look up to. Mm. And seeing his performance live solidified that. Yeah, I think that was a big part to it, man. Uh, As my runner-up, I'm going to leave my favorite to last. I'm giving it to J. Cole. I've said many times. He's been a big ass me this year. I truly believe what he's done, especially with some of the deaths that have happened with drugs over the past few years within hip-hop. Like um, Little Peep. Mac Miller, like there's been a lot of drug infused culture that's been pushed by artists like Future, Migos, that is just like stimulating all the youth. Like look at the pumps and all them coming up. They just glorify drugs. Whereas K- KOD from J. Cole took that approach and twisted it in a way which made you think more about the decisions you make and how it's like, just it's just a, a risky road to take. And not only that, he had amazing features. His label Dreamville was doing big things with J.I.D., Earth Gang, like Omen, label Bass, like the labels, like he's just, I think that the, what he's done this year, not only for himself, but for his label and for other artists and just what he represents, like the whole package, it's been just an amazing year for J. Cole. Well said. I guess my, someone else who sticks out prominently is Push T. Mm-hmm. Push T, not because the influence he had with his album and how strong that was, my favorite album of this year, but because of how he handled uh, the interviews and the Drake uh, kind of yeah. um, conflict. Really smart about it. Yeah, I think it showed how calculated he was and, you know, kind of gave one of Drake's biggest L's of his career. 100%. And it's not just about that. It's about how you handle yourself. I think it's a representation of how someone can handle themselves better through conflict, through adversity, and through, uh, through competition. Mm. So those two would be my top artists. Uh, my top artist of 2018 is none other than Mr. Kanye West. You know why? You have to explain this one because why? Uh, I wouldn't say too much for what he's done in the media. I think for what he's done for music. He has curated so much amazing music this year. Who was your top two albums? Mm. Pusha T. And this Kids See Ghosts. Yeah, those, that, that. His album, Yay. Yeah. Also, Tiana Taylor. We didn't fuck with but nice. that amount of work. And also, he planned to release more music. And who's been the talk of the town throughout all this year? Maybe, mostly in a negative light, but who has been on the lips of everyone? Mm. How much control and presence has he had in 2018? That's a, yeah, a lot. And it's not the most. Although not, a lot of it hasn't been positive, if we're talking through musical means, he has had a huge year. And just the way that he went about these album launches as well, surrounded by so many people, he had it on live. And just seeing like all the people just really enjoy and just get involved with this as like... A huge community. That's what hip-hop is. I think that's a great point. And you've made the focus about music instead of um, the controversy. And I feel like that they were some of my favorite moments of this year. Just being hyped up by Kanye West. He's got an album this week. He's got an album next week. That was a that really... Month, what was that? I don't know. That was March. It was a big month. Right, March. I think it was around... March or April. But like, that was such a fun month to be in hip-hop and to, just be, just to be feeling that. Because he just released so much good music. Well said. 
Like legit. I'd agree with that. As much as I loved Jake or having a year, I think Kanye West had a better year because he curated so much music and just just the way he went about it. And even just like, I know I didn't like Ye as much as Kitsy Ghost, but just hearing those two different artists, as I mentioned, two completely different artists on those albums and produce so many different artists for so many other people. It's incredible. Kanye West was my best artist of 2018. Here we are. Jungle Beats Awards. Um, make sure to leave your list below. I believe we had 14 awards. So leave your list below of yours as well. Love to comment on them and share our thoughts. And if you didn't agree with us, then just let us know why. And let us know if you want us to continue to do this segment throughout the coming years. Yeah, I think it's fun. Yeah. And we'll change the questions up as we go. Fuck it, we'll do whatever the fuck we want. We Jungle Beats, we, we, we cringe as fuck. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed our awards. And if you want to give us your own awards, given to us we'll hit you back up the ass so that's 2018 man we've dropped over fucking 200 fucking videos man over 200 videos this year we'd like to give a big thank you to you guys for supporting yeah, us it's You've, been, uh, and while it hasn't been the biggest year for us popularity wise i think mm. what it's done is has helped us depth wise like we've gotten deeper with you guys we, we've really been consistent i think we've built a nice foundation yeah i feel like we've definitely continued to grow the way that we go about things as well how we say things, how we think about things. We're in one space this time. Mm. We're not fucking going anywhere. Let's radio Our station. audio quality has improved. Yes, oh, that took a while. Our editing's improved. So this has been a year for maybe not popularity, but for growth in many, many, many ways. Absolutely. So thank you all, each and every single one of you who love or hate us. Hundred, y'all should hate us because uh, Ghost Town was whack. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> bye.